Christmas! Hey everybody! It's me, Chef uh, Claus! Ho, ho, ho! I give people knives so they can slaughter their brethren. How's everyone doing this nice Christmas Eve? I mean, Chefmas Eve. I'm sorry. I had a little bit too much, you know what I'm saying? Oh, 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 oh! As you can see, I'm pretty authentic. I'm not Chef Claus, I'm Santa Claus. Except this time, this is a, this is real. This is a real beard. And I just thought I'd wear this hat just for the sake of it. Ho, ho, ho. Well, you guys seem to want to make meals. We'll make meals from the greatest chef of the universe. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just kidding, guys. It's Chef Press. It's the holidays. I gotta do it. Chef Claus is coming. It can be some really, really great knives, some really, really great cutlery, and hopefully a really, really, oh, really great food. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to make some food for you this holiday season and your family. So go ahead, and if you haven't, get a Christmas tree cake. I know, generic, but this is only the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. There are way more stuff that we are gonna be doing this uh, holiday season. Tis the season, they say. Tis the season. Now first we're gonna start out in the cupboard, and the next one, we're gonna start out on the oven. Isn't that cool, right? I'm gonna use the oven for the first time and forever. So, obviously, put your Christmas tree cake here, and what you wanna do is put it in the microwave for around one minute. Actually, scratch that, put it in the microwave for around 20 seconds, and hopefully, it will melt by then. How are you guys doing today? You doing great? Good. I know, I pretty, I pretty much fooled all of you thinking I was Chef Claus, because look at this. But Chef Claus wears a chef hat. Uh, I just thought, you know, since these normies wear, oh, it's done. Ho, ho, ho. It is melted onto the plate and it's very uh, sweaty. Very sweaty, as you can see. Look at, look at the sweat, the bee of sweat, and it's like bleeding through the plate. That's what you want. Smells good. Smells like burnt chocolate. That's what we want. Get your uh, chocolate syrup. Doesn't matter which kind. I'd prefer Hershey's. And uh, drizzle it. This coke drizzle. Yeah. No. I probably should be making uh, Christmas time. Uh, you know things, but. All right. So I will show you the proper way how it should be done. So if you have yours all slathered. A big chunk of it down here everywhere then you are good to go now this is called what I call the chefness tree now the chefness tree is beautiful and it, it tastes really really freaking good so get a pickle jar uh, mount olive uh, right here this this kind mount olive hamburger Guild chips. Very preferred. Get your fork, because you're going to need that for basic etiquette. If you don't use forks, what kind of chef are you, you know? So, uh, oh shoot. Get it, uh, some pickles and put it on top of the Christmas tree. Get three to slap on there. Oops. Oops. Just slather it in chocolate if you want. That's what I'm doing. I'll show you afterwards, you know. The cool thing is, is after we make this regular old snack, the, uh, whatever they call it, the entree, we're going to be making my, uh, stove, my, uh, main course. So I'm excited for that, as well as an entree. This is the side. I'm a chef, I know what I'm talking about. You guys, you guys don't know, unless you're pro chefs like me. Alright, so it should look like this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. See the pickles drizzled? I'm not making a... Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, shoot, Dr. Dre. I'm not making a Dr. Dre reference. 
Now, my favorite part, guys, who knows my favorite, oh. We're out of creamy peanut butter. Well, since we're out of creamy peanut butter, I guess there's only one way to do this. No, this beard's real. This beard's real. Like, tug on it. Oh, tug. It's fake. Keeps getting my nose. Uh... Oh, wait. Oh, gosh. We have been saved. Thank God it's Christmas, am I right? Just gotta take this thing out. Alright, so you wanna get your peanut butter uh, and slather that stuff. Oh, the heck? What the heck, man? Guys, I can't get it open. Just gotta. Hey, lie down in there. It's okay. The police aren't here. They're just barking for no reason. They're supposed to be guard dogs. I don't know why they're barking for no reason, but... Oh, that's why. So apparently, my uh, stabbings went through the peanut butter. And apparently, made uh, holes in the peanut butter. So, uh... Merry Christmas to me, I guess. Get your uh, butter knife. Just out of freaking everything, aren't we? Get some creamy peanut butter and just slather it on there. Mm hmm. That's right. Mm hmm. That's right. Actually, can't slather it. So, because I try to, and it won't stay. So, One for me. And now, oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. We have made our first thing. The side. Or would we say the entree? <laughs> this isn't the full entree, Sean. Yeah. But here we go. The peanut butter just fell off, but like pickles. I'll give it some light. Here, you know what? Let's try a new thing. Let's try a new thing. This delicious meal is made out of a Christmas tree cake with some pickles drizzled and covered in chocolate syrup and with a little top of... Let us start the feast. Make sure you get your fork from last time you put the pickles on the Christmas cadaver. And let us get this... I'm gonna try the chocolate syrup. There's a hint of pickle juice right on the syrup. That's fantastic. That's what we want. I'm giving you guys what you want by wearing the Santa costume. All right. This is this is pure, made from chefs around the globe. They gave me this as a gift. They told me I was a Santa. All right, so uh, I'm gonna try everything, you know, so I'm gonna scoop up some peanut butter, cut off a piece of the Christmas tree and get a pickle. See, got the pickle, Christmas tree. Oop, the cake fell off. Ah, uh, no, there is a piece. All right, you ready? Ho, ho, ho. I get this one. A solid. 10 out of 10. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome back. Now, you can't see my face, but that's okay. Because there ain't no disgrace in my face. You hear me? You hear me, fool? Uh, welcome back. 
to the stove, my boys. So, first thing, and this is the most important thing, you always gotta remember to get a pan, and you gotta remember to get the right pan. If you don't get the right pan, I'm sorry, but you're screwed. Get this small pan. Uh, it's pretty, pretty light. You know, you can throw around easily. It's pretty light. Uh, put it anywhere you want. I'm gonna put it right here, since that's probably a safer bet. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to go now to grab, uh, if you have any, some meat. If you don't have any meat, that's okay. There's plenty to go around. So, uh, preferably, I want you to get some Black Forest Ham. Because Black Forest Ham from Hillshire Farms is the brand to go. Now, obviously, we're not going to start yet. We just got on the gravy train with this. We obviously need some oil and some seasoning. So get some basil leaves. Some basil. Some basil. What's that word? Basil. Some basil. Okay, I'll shut up now. And then you want the avocado oil, or just any oil in general. Now, uh, there's some bad news and some good news. Bad news is, I can't find the oil. Good news? Wait a minute, good news. Oil has been found. So to make this Christmas dinner the most best dinner you will ever have. We need to pop open the Hillshire Farms ham and get one piece. Now gently, gently rip it and make sure there's no other pieces connected to it. Like this. See, this was connected to it and there's no other pieces to this. So, actually, get your oil first. I'm a chef, I swear. I'm actually better than Gordon Ramsay. He has nothing on me. He's a poopy head. So now, you want to start heating up uh, the right one, the bottom right. Well, at least I do. So I'm going to put this one right here. Uh, I'm going to go for a medium. I cook tough. And I just kind of, you know, want to swerve the oil around. See what I'm doing? Swerving it. Swerve. Alright. So now with that oil inside of that, we get our Hillshire Farms turkey and lay it in there. Now, we are going to have to wait a little bit before our Hillshire Farms turkey starts to heat up, but we want to make sure it's in the middle. Alright. Make sure it's in the middle. And uh, we wait for it to start to sizzle. Now while we wait for it to start sizzling, we want to get into the big things now. Uh, well not big things, but kind of small things that you need to know about the ham. First, after the ham is cooked, you will need a hot dog bun. In which the hot dog bun will cover up the burnt, well not the burnt, the cooked ham. Once the ham is cooked deliciously, and it's not raw like this is a raw looking piece of ham, then you will be okay. This ham does not seem to be bubbling. It's making me kind of angry, you know? Hey, Mrs. Whiskers. Mrs. Whiskers. Sorry, guys. Mrs. Whiskers gets in the way sometimes. And now, well... Glad you asked. Now we wait. Ooh, we got some bubbles. Not any sizzling though, but bubbles. So start. Yeah, I just time skipped ahead. It's been like three, two minutes. It's been a while, but uh, this hasn't been going yet because I had it on the wrong setting. It was a simple accident that all chefs have, okay? All chefs have accidents. It's just... Indeed, I hear some sizzling. Well, kind of. It's like... Uh... Yeah, it's some sizzling, boys. 
I'm going to time skip ahead to tell you when it's sizzling hot and ready for you. A few moments later. Here we go, boys. Glad you could drop in at this time. As you can hear, sizzling. And that is a good start for our nice product. Now, I do need a plate for this nice product. Well, let's put it right over here. So as you can hear, it's sizzling uh, very profusely now. And that's good. That's great. That's awesome. So now you just want to pay attention to the sizzling hand. Now make sure you have the right spatula. I'm going to use tongs since the hand is so slippery. So, while this ham is cooking, and you got to make sure though, on both sides, everything gets equal parts. As you see, all the oil is jumpy, and that's what we call jumping oil here in the chef zone. Jumping oil is very dangerous, and you do not want to get hit by it, or else you could burn to death. It's also called oil rain by some other chefs, but they're not, they're not like me. They're not on my level. So while this is cooking, let's get a bag of hot dogs, hot dog buns, and lettuce. Okay. Wow. Don't worry, this is normal. All the stove is going to be covered in oil, mostly because ham, this kind of ham, Hillshire, has jumped in oil. Now, you don't want to keep it in for too long, but you do want to keep it in for when the oil settles down and it has a nice, crisp, nice, crisp uh, side to it. So very, very nice, very juicy ham. And okay, it's okay to eat the oil with it on the oil. Because if you do, that's okay. It is totally understandable. And, uh, you know. So, you want to cook up that side real quick. While it settles down for a little bit. Let us open this up. Actually, you probably want to keep an eye on this more than you want to get the bones right now. Because this ham is pretty much your... Alright. It's pretty much your, things, your Christmas meal. So, I think we are good on the ham. I'm going to show you guys the ham. And uh, show you how good it looks. Look at this. The ham is nice and brown. Uh, nice crisps to it and it's very it smells like Christmas it smells like ranch Doritos so now that you know how to do that and you got your pan let's wash off the pan you will be needing it for later but for right now let's clear off all the excess oil and kind of scrub it. we will scrub it later in the video when I'm probably be taking a break. So that was uh, a fantastic, fantastic uh, fantastic cooking. I have to say I'm very proud of myself and I'm very proud of you people for uh, letting me do this. So now we're gonna unlock the hot dog bag very nice and i tried to do this while it was cooking but you probably don't want to do that because that could be very very unsafe and we do not want that we do not want unsafeness who's calling at this freaking hour i don't care all right so open your hot dog bun take in your ham and stuff it in there this is called a ham stuffer 
but we're not done yet. You think it's just a boring hand stuffer? This is your entree, by the way. So this is your, uh, pretty much your, uh, your, uh, side. So it's not much. You want to get the basil, okay? You want to get some basil. Just open it up and just shake some basil in there. You don't want too many. You don't want to overdo the basil, right? So if you overdo the basil, it's just going to taste like straight up basil. So don't overdo the basil. See, there you go. There's the basil. Right there. Strong smell of basil. <sighs> I know you guys can't see. I hate this setup with light. Hate it. But I can't just turn it off because you can't see anything. So, you got the basil, and you got the ham, and everything. But one thing's missing from that, and that is my favorite ingredient of this. Black Rose Hot Sauce. Indeed, indeed. Black Rose Hot Sauce. Very good hot sauce. Pepper Palace made it. And you just want to slather it in there. Come on. I don't know if you guys can see this. No, you cannot. Hmm. See, it's it's uh, it's in there. It's like the red. I don't know if you guys can see it, but at, near the end of the video, you will be able to see it and all the glories that I have made here today, except for the uh, Christmas, uh, whatever it was called, because I'm not French. We have just successfully made our entree, which is good. Clap it up, everybody. Clap it up. Woo! Yeah, baby! But now comes time, a very important time, that I am leaning down and talk to you guys about. I gotta put the, the beard on, or else it'll be weird. So, this may be, this nice, slathered in hot sauce basil, the, the ham, fram, the ham fram, whatever it's called, uh, very delicious meal, very delicious meal, you'll like it, but we're not done yet, we're not done yet, we're not even close to being done yet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to tell you all a little, a little story. See, when I was a kid, I loved a bunch of stuff. Turkey was my favorite thing at Thanksgiving. Well, why not make turkey on here? But I don't have any turkey. Get some turkey. If you don't have any turkey, go to your store and get some turkey. It's not that hard. So... Today, we're going to make the turkey malarkey. Now I can get this man, this freaking beard off, dude. So indeed, we had just made a really good thing, right? A really good ham. Alright, we're back with our pan. We cleaned it. Everything's good. Everything's sober. That's water. So, uh, I don't know if we want to use water in it. Probably should scrub it out some more. Or dry it out some more, you know what I mean? Right, there we go. It's dried up. And now we get to uh, cooking. I took off the beard because it was bothering me. And a delivery guy came. But I wore the beard when the delivery guy came. So, let us get cooking! So first, obviously, put some oil on that baby. You know, not too much, not too little. You don't want to be a little baby about it. You know what I'm saying? Just swish it around, make sure it covers the whole thing. It's an old technique we chefs use. Learned it when I was just a little baby. All right. 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I, I know most people say, well, Chef Preston, if you are a real chef, how's your job? And I say, my job is fantastic, and I'll tell you why. This is my favorite dish, and this is what is going to make you and your family happy and think this is the most delish thing you could ever eat on this planet. Now you might be saying, that's a little, oh, that's a little big, you know? That's a big, you know, freaking, you know, freaking, you know, big old, big old lie right there, Chef Preston. But you would be wrong. So I want you to get some pepperonis and uh, open them up, obviously. And drop two inside. You won't be needing the tongues for this one, babies. Because we are actually going to be mixing these around. So remember the spatula I used last time. And that spatula turned out to be a really one that just mixes up stuff. Well, congratulations because you've reached the time where we're going to mix up stuff. But with at the same time cook things. Now you might be like Chef Preston, buddy, you have finally gone mad. And I would say this, you're probably actually right. I probably have lost my marbles. But to say the least, this is great. Get some uh, raspberries. Now the hairy fruit. And drop a couple. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now while we're doing this, we probably want to turn uh, up the heat on this one to medium low. Now you don't need much heat for this one. But it's good to get it to a big, good, crisp, medium low. And then after all that, you want to put a piece of bread on it. They might be saying, uh, you, you've lost your marks, but no, I have not. You don't want to put a piece of bread in here. You want to put bread in the frickin' toaster. I'm just joking with you, man. You don't put the bread in the frickin' stove. That's what stupid people do. Put your toaster on a level three and go ahead and slam this bad boy and roast him. Now, obviously, remember what I said. We ain't using the tongs on this one. We are using the Swisher Swasher, which is short for the uh, the one that you do this for. Usually you use it for meats. So for this one, we're using it for this. And I have to tell you something. This is a greater use for it. I will tell you that. So while we wait for this to heat up, which it probably won't take long for it to heat up, since uh, it's like really starting to get hot right in this area, I'm going to tell you something that you first, importantly, need to freaking know. Alright? After this is done, and after your bread is done, which it's going to get done pretty early, your bread is. This isn't. It's going to take a little bit. But, once it's done, you put it on the plate, and you eat. I'm just kidding, you don't. You put mustard and ranch on it. Now, you might be saying, Where's the turkey coming to this? Well, we put cold turkey on it. Now, you might be weirded out about that, but turkey malurkey is a very odd combo made by the great chefs themselves back in t back in the day. Back in 1776, the first reported uh, the first reported uh, turkey malurkey was made by Alex Frederick Rogerson. Uh, we're getting some bubbles here. The bubbles are only the beginning, remember. Bubbles are only the I'm just cooking this up. It's getting dark outside. Very dark. Very scary. Very spooky. Very dark. Very dark. Alright. There's our toast. Toast is done, but this ain't. This ain't cooking. And that way, when you put it on your toast or on your bread, 
and turkey with it, it's going to taste so delicious. So now, see we're really starting to sizzle, so we want to move. There we go. Be careful with the raspberries, very fragile. Don't let the pepperonis get on the side, and be careful not to let anything stick to the pan. Now, I want you to go get a plate and put your toast on it. And I want you to periodically check on these so you move them around. Because remember, the sizzle, and be careful with the raspberries. I think I got a bad one here. And remember, the sizzle is the drizzle, and that means to sizzle, which means it translates to uh, movement. Now that they're sizzling up, get some turkey out. Now, I know some of you may not have any turkey, but oven roasted turkey breast is probably the best way to go. And as you can see, the uh, raspberries are starting to fall apart. And the pepperonis are getting pockets on. So we want to move this off, turn off the heat, and let these sit for a little bit. They have been through a lot. We should probably let them calm down for a minute. Now, I'm gonna bring my stuff over here. The toast, level three, should be nice and toasted in the uh, oven roasted turkey. And we wanna see if we got the bag. And remember, it, it needs to be cold. It needs to be cold. I feel like the guy on Khan Academy. It needs to be cold. Needs to be cold. All right, there we go. So make sure you put a lot of turkey on there. And uh, yeah. So now we will now pour the condiments. Well, the, not condiments. Not yet. Not the condiments yet. And uh, we probably want to get a spoon. Get these uh, raspberries out since. They're freaking miserable, which I don't know why. Uh, fried strawberry, I mean raspberries are my favorite. Uh, indeed. The pepperonis have like little bumps on them, which is good, which is good. So that's what they're supposed to have on them. And the raspberries should have some toasted on them. So that shows that it's been toasted once or twice in the whole process. Now I will now clean this off. And now we will now put on the condiment. condiments. Condiments, condiments, condiments. And remember what I said, you need some mustard and some ranch. Now it may sound like a disgusting combination, I know. But I also know what's good for you and what's bad for you. And what's good for you is this, trust me, you're gonna love this right here in your own home. So first put on the mustard. <sighs> the turkey malarkey is such a great thing for your household needs. Gosh dang frick. There we go. You see, this is what it should look like right now with the mustard. Let's see, We've got the pepperonis. The raspberries are covered up by the pepperonis, which you also probably want to do. All right, so here we go with the ranch. Just a little bit of it, though. You don't want too much of it. There we go. What can I say? I'm a genius. I'm a chef genius. Using everything in my way to make something actually good. So, got everything in!
the sandwich. Cover it up. Nice, nice, nice. There you have it. Now I'm going to take it to the dinner table. Where we will feast on our nice, delicious meals. I hope, I hope, some of you have learned something from this journey. So please. little crooked there <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you have who have withstand the 30 minute video of me cooking the most delicious Christmas meal we're first gonna try out this thing I forgot what it's called but who cares made with basil some uh, oven made ham and some uh, black rose hot sauce from pepper palace let's eat Mm. Awesome. Really good sandwich. Really spicy. Really spicy. If you like spicy stuff, you love spicy stuff, get some black rose hot sauce, some basil, and uh, put some turkey, I mean black ham. Bah! Cook it up. Mmm. Beautiful. And now, for our main course of this whole evening. The ranch mustard, turkey, and roasted pepperoni and raspberry balhina. The turkey malurky. Turkey malurky is beautiful. It's great. It's astounding. It's a third world wonder. So now we're gonna try everything this has to offer us into the public. Well, let's dig in, shall we? Mm. I will say, this is pretty good. Uh, very. The mustard and the ranch mixed together gives a sweet flavor of to the turkey, and it's just it's beautiful. And I really really like it. Great. But anyway, thank you for it. Coming to my feast. I know you would probably think it's a huge feast, but nah. You just need two great elements of food and eat them. I will definitely be eating all of this and all of this because of how good they are. And I want to thank all of my viewers this Christmas. I forgot to do a Thanksgiving special, so I'm thanking you. And, and for Christmas, too. I'm thanking you guys for Christmas. Because without you guys, this channel would be nothing. And this channel would be something. But it wouldn't be what you made it to be. You made it to be this. A great, astounding chef. Making great, astounding things. It's, it's honestly just... Beautiful. Astounding. And I want to thank you all. Thank you. And now, I must go to sleep. As for I am tired. It's only six o'clock. But that's okay. Because I'm very tired. Good night, everybody. And Merry Christmas. To all, and to all, a good night. Oh.
Fascino is the own Fast your grand oi Fascino is the best of the effect of the effect Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh